take a peek at these questions on day three. These are an overview of the day threes. We'll start with this one. Uh, when you're, this is a dream come true here because we've done these. Uh, you could multiply them out, or you could do that. Do you remember doing a descending x? Does that sound familiar? Remember that? There was no song for it, unfortunately. Yeah, we could make up one. So you took, this is to the fourth. So you start to the fourth, then to the third, then to the second, then to the first, then to the zero, which we could ignore because to the zero is just going to be one. Then I take the negative two over x, ascend that to the zero, to the first. And what do you notice right away about the powers of the blue and the red for each term? They add up to four, as they should. And then the last one's negative 2 over x to the fourth. So you have what I call the descending a, descends down this way, and the ascending b, which is going up all the way to 4. But we're missing one thing. What are we missing? Coefficients. So we got to do Pascal's triangle out to where we get to 4s because we're going to the fourth power. So this will be 1. 1 in front of x squared to the 4th, 4, 6, 4, and 1. So then uh, this is x to the 8th. This is 2 times 4. It's also negative. It's negative here. Negative 8 x to the 6th over 1. Can you get the rest of it? Yeah. Is that all right? And here's your answer right here. All right, then uh, for the next one, I thought this was a little easy. Sum of n is n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, this is my arithmetic sum equation. But with the arithmetic sum, we have two clues. The mean of the first 10 terms is 6. So with this first part, the uh, the sum, well, let's talk about mean. Isn't mean the sum over what? How many you have, right? So if our mean, if our mean is 6, we're going to have 6 over or this is going to be the sum over n, right? Which in this case is, I think it's 10, isn't it? Okay, so here's what happens. When you have 10 for n, we don't know the first term, we don't know the last term, but we know this. We could figure this out by going 6 times 10. This is the sum over 10 is your mean. You'll get 60 equal to 10 over 2 is 5, 2a, 10 minus 1 is 9, times d. And that's how I got this formula here. And you can divide by 5 to get this. Then the next one you have, okay, the next one you have is the 20, first 20 terms. So this is 20, and the mean is going to be uh, 16. So I take 2 times 16 is 32. 32 times 10 is 320. 20 over 2 is 10, 2a plus 19d. And then if you divide by 10, you're going to get these two. So then all that they did is they said 2a plus 9d equals 12 and 2a plus 19d equals 32. And be comfortable with this technique because it's pretty quick and, and handy, especially without a calculator. Try to get something to cancel out. These two a's will cancel. You get 19d minus 9d is 10 D equals 32 minus 12 is 20. D is 2. So you know what D is. Then you can put into 
you know, 2a plus 9 times 2 equals 12. 2a equals 12 minus 18 is negative 6. So a is negative 3. That's the first term. a is negative 3. So did I answer it? Did I win? No, I haven't answered the question yet. Now I have to find the 15th term. Now that's a different formula. That's a formula that's a of n is the first term plus n minus 1 times d. That's in your packet. And if we want, if we want to find the 15th term, the first term is negative 3, 15 minus 1. The difference is 2. So it's 2 times 14. 2 times 14 is 28. Minus 3 is 25. So that's the sum. Okay, so let's try the next one. Uh, this one's a little, a little tricky because what you have to do is you have to visualize vectors again. Here's A. Here's B. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to add, it looks like these are finding the magnitude of the sum of them, and you're also going to find the magnitude of the difference. Okay, we ran out of time for this one. You take A, and then instead of B, you're going to flip it around. So it's in the total opposite direction. And then um, you're finding the magnitude, let's go this way, of A plus B, and you're trying to find the magnitude of A minus B. And look what they're saying. Determine the value of A, the angle, that's going to get you three times the difference is going to get you the magnitude of this one. So I would guess that this here is my angle, right? Would you agree with that? It says, oh no, it's the angle between, yeah. Yeah, so this would be, that's the same, right? And this is the angle between, Wait a minute, this one here. I think this is the angle alpha here. Let alpha be the angle between unit vectors, oh, unit vectors A and B. So it's this one here. This is my angle. It's like if I put these two, I'm going to clone this one again, put it right here. This is the angle alpha between these two. That's the angle that we're looking at. All right, so um, what you could do is you could say that um, determine the value of the cosine of alpha. So the cosine of alpha sounds like law of cosines to me. So in the first case, what you're going to do is you're going to say that this here is going to be squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine alpha. And I think uh, in this case, this one here, they're just straight up the angle between. For this one, you're going to have to do, this is the angle between, you're going to do a 180 minus alpha. So take a look at this. If this is alpha, and this is pi minus alpha. What do you notice about this x and this x? They're in opposite directions, right? So this is why this one is going to turn this one to a plus. This to a plus. So you're going to get both cases log cosines. A squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. All that same a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine. This is the big angle here because it's switched. It's, this one's the obtuse one. So therefore, that's why this becomes a plus. So, and that makes sense because this has to be bigger than this, 
right? It has to be larger. So then when you put unit vector in, what's the magnitude of a unit vector? What's the magnitude of that? How big is it? Unit means one. So you can just put a one in for A and B. That's why they get one plus one is two, minus two cosine A. One plus one is two, uh, plus two cosine A, okay? And then they did some beautiful little simple algebra. Here's what they did. They said, as an original, this alpha plus beta magnitude is going to be three times the, the negative one. So here's the negative one. Three times the negative one, cosine alpha, is equal to just the regular one, square root of 2 plus 2 cosine alpha. You see where I got that? This one's a little trickier, isn't it? Must be 10. Square it, and you get 2 plus 2 cosine alpha. What's 3 squared? 9 times 2 minus 2 cosine alpha. And then what will happen there is you're going to get uh, 18 minus 18 cosine alpha. Okay. So therefore, you're going to get 18 minus 2 is 16. 2 cosine plus 18 is 20 cosine alpha. So cosine alpha is 16 over 20. Does that work into divide by 4 over 4? Four? 4 over 5? Yeah, so we got that one. We'll get a little far on this one. For number 12, it says a particle moves in a straight line, displacement of the origin, where T is in seconds, displacement. What is the period? This seems like a really tough one, but these two parts, let's find the period of each one. The period is 2 pi for sine over what? B. Okay. So here's B1, a good vitamin, and B2, not as good a vitamin. So divide by pi. This one is going to have a period of 2. This one is going to have a period of what? 2 pi over 2 pi. What's that going to be? 1. So the one that's larger wins. This one happens every 1. The other one happens every 2. So this one's going to overlap every two, so period is actually two. That's what you'd put for that. Then find expressions for velocity. I think you could do this, couldn't you? Take the derivatives of those and simplify it. Just take a look at those. But uh, for part three, you're going to set this thing here equal to zero. So uh, I'm going to take out a two pi and get cosine pi t plus cosine two pi t equal to 0. If you divide by 2 pi, 0 by 2 pi, you're just going to get cosine pi t equal negative cosine 2 pi t. And what's cosine 2 theta equal to? I guess we could keep it on the same side, huh? Keep it on the same side. Cosine 2 pi t is going to be the same as 2 cosine squared pi t minus 1. And you can look in on this one. They actually wrote those out kind of cool. They did a 2 cosine squared pi t plus cosine pi t minus 1 equals 0. And they factored that beast. Cosine pi t times 2. And then I think they did cosine pi t minus 1 equals 0. Okay. And to get a positive, this is going to have to be a positive. So this equals 0 to get 1 half. This equals 0 to get negative 1. Now here's the bad news. You ready for the bad news? You're going to have a lot of answers because this thing is between, look at this. This thing is between 0 and 4. 
So if it's between zero and four, I don't want you to give up on this, but um, <laughs> it's nasty. Cosine pi t equal one half. So think unit circle. When is the cosine equal to one half? Well, let's do it this way. Plus two pi k. Okay. So when does that happen? Yes. Whoops, I put that in too soon. I don't want to put that in yet. So one is, yeah, pi, uh, cosine, not pi over six, you're close. Three pi over three. So pi t is going to be equal to pi over three plus two pi k. And then pi t is going to be also equal to negative pi over three plus two pi k. Now if you divide by pi, you're going to get t is equal to one third plus 2k, and you're going to get negative one-third plus 2k. And then you just find all the values between 0 and 4 that work. So one-third is going to work. Uh, the other one is going to, that won't work, but if you add one, two-thirds. Wait, did I do that wrong? One cosine is that. Well, anyway, that's how they get the one-third, five-thirds, seven-thirds, eleven-thirds. And then the other one is equal to negative one. That's the one you've got to solve for t. So you have cosine pi t equal negative one, and that's at pi. So you have pi t is equal to pi plus two pi t, k. And so divide by that, you're going to get 1 plus 2k. So you're going to get 1, and you're going to get 3. So those will, those two come from. And I think that's it for 12, isn't it? Is that it? Oh, no. Then there's a math induction one. You should do that one. Try it and check it tonight.